our center has been in operation now for almost seven years. So we've had a lot of learnings throughout that time period of seven years. Some we learned a lot and we did well. Some things we had to work on and change what we did. So we want to make sure that other centers learn from uh, where we started and what's been successful and what hasn't been successful. Our journey actually started much earlier. In 1999, we tried to start building a proton center. We actually didn't sign a contract till 2006. Then 2010 is when we treated our first patient. So there's been a tremendous change in treatment from when we started getting involved with this field in 1999 up to uh, 2010 when we started treating patients. So really, computers and imaging has really driven the field of proton therapy for the last decade. As we've seen improvements in both of those areas, we've been able to better image tumors, and we've been able to place the dose better than we could before. So you've seen developments as, such as pencil beam scanning, where we can treat spot by spot, or cone beam CT or CT imaging in the proton treatment room. And it really allows us to treat additional treatment sites that we really couldn't before. Our center at the University of Pennsylvania has actually treated a wide variety of sites with proton beam therapy. So our main sites are actually lung cancer, GI cancers, pediatric tumors being an important one. But many of these patients are patients that are receiving combined chemotherapy and radiation because we're seeing reduced toxicity when we combine the two agents together as opposed to previously when we combined it with conventional radiation. It was just too toxic for many patients. So we're seeing markedly reduced toxicity in that setting. We're extremely interested in exploring immunotherapy. Much of the data right now is in the conventional treatment realm with stereotactic body radiation therapy, or SBRT. But we're looking to expand that to proton therapy, and we'll be doing a lot of work in our research room, actually, to define what's the best way to deliver this, and then bring that into the treatment modality and new clinical trials with protons. Protons are a tool in the toolbox, and they're not going to be perfect for everything, quite frankly. But I think they're going to be good for a number of treatments that are going to be widely accepted a few years from now. I'm already seeing the difference from where we were five years ago to now, and I, I agree, five years from now we'll see much of a difference from what's accepted. But that doesn't mean conventional radiation is going away. I look at protons as really a tool in the toolbox for the radiation oncologist. It's an important tool, but not for every single thing we treat either. I think learn from others that have gone before you. So we visited every center that was in operation at that time and learned what they would do differently, what they would think about the next generation. So we learned a lot from the previous centers that were out there, so spend time with them. Understand that training is critical. These are complicated centers, very different from a conventional linear accelerator, and you need specialized training in physics, in dosimetry, in therapy, and in the physicians, and making sure to put those investments in that area, uh, and really starting years ahead almost before you open the center to get those people trained up to the appropriate level. Uh, and working with clinical protocols that are really already in place and have been proven, particularly when you start a center, so that way your team can get experience with some simpler treatments and then build up your repertoire of various treatments. Thank <laughs> you.